really struggled to get that one out. They should be simple, simple well, because they should be simple to rig and animate. But, oh, it was quite, quite the task to do that. But um, yeah, I think for me, it's always been kind of a necessity thing of like, I might not, I'm probably not the best artist out there, but if I can draw just well enough to get the stories I want to tell across, then that's the goal. So um, it was really just a process of like getting as good as I could get at what I wanted, but not being too involved where like I was getting in the way trying to have the perfect style or whatever, so, um, yeah. Do you have any books, like, all the Um, that's a, that's a fantastic question. I, yeah, I think, like, most, most, uh, just kind of, like, modern 2D cartoons, I think, have had a lot of influence on me, um, because that's, that's what I watch, and that's what I like, so, uh, no, no anime weave stuff, though. No, I would never say that out loud, even though it's true. That's right, cool. Thank you. What do you feel like when you're in live shows? Very, very sweaty. <laughs> she means, um, how do you feel, um, right now lying in front of everyone here? Uh, I'm, I'm very grateful that so many people are here. It's, it's really crazy because I think, like, being, like, a, a person behind, like, especially with animation, right? Like, nobody, nobody knows who, or, who directs or the animated content a lot, which is, which is a shame because I've, Sounded amazing people, but um, uh, yeah, like just putting stuff out on the internet, like you get information, but it's not like realizing that there's human beings uh, that are watching the stuff, uh, which is really cool and, and alarming, but in a very wholesome good way. So, uh, hello, thanks for coming. Um, I also have another question. Yeah. Um, you said you in episode three is gonna be like a prom, right? Yeah. Um, are you gonna pull like a carry? Like Harry from the Body Lamp? You should be a writer on the show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean maybe. But that would certainly be fun. I guess I guess we'll see, but but, but probably, yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Hey there, how's it going? Love you, Kevin, love you, Liam. Love all your good work. I have two questions if that's okay. Um, Liam, someone on your Discord asked a, a question. Will you ever release it? Ooh, I, I, I have a, I have a folder on my computer that is just a bunch of like work in progress, like CG stuff. So like, I, like I have a lot of concept art, but like for me, like the cooler part is like, especially because it's silly, because like in progress CG stuff like doesn't look like oh the. The drawing isn't complete yet. It looks like nightmare fuel. Um, so I have a bunch of just crazy nonsense of like characters wigging the hell out and like half rendered nightmare things just like spazzing through scenes. Um, so we could release like a, a, a nightmare folder for people to enjoy once the show's out. But, yeah. I'll take that. Very, very, very surreal. Um, but yeah, totally. I think like we'll, we'll, we'll definitely look into like releasing work in progress content because I think it's super cool. Like obviously the, the main thing is you, you, you don't want to like ruin the, you don't want to like see too much how the, how the thing is made while you're trying to like enjoy it, but like once, once the season's done, like yeah, I, I want to like show people all the goofs that, that had to be surpassed to get to a semi-watchable <laughs> experience. Oh, and question two, when's the Tipo Zuzi merch releasing? We can get it posted outside just after this, so. Uh, you there you go, there you go. Thank you. Thank you. My question is, so what happened if the virus J put it in actually worked? What if it worked? Yes. Uh, I think you would be super dead. Actually, wait. <laughs> sorry, I was I was gonna do a joke thing, but we we cut. Well, yeah. It's a uh, sorry. I'm uh. It you yeah, would have super killed him. Um. 
but also then maybe not. <laughs> and that doesn't, that sounds like I'm speaking nonsense, but it'll, it'll make sense eventually. Ooh. Oh, so think about that, but not too hard. It's, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then that's about it. That works. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but yeah. Would have killed him, but then maybe something spooky would have happened. I guess we'll have to find out. First of all, that guy's my brother. <laughs> <laughs> that's very, very wholesome. Also, why did you choose Rudy's mom to be the guy you sent to be nightmare? Um. Sorry, what, what, could, could, what, what was that? Could you rephrase that? Why did you choose Boozy's mom to be the giant centipede nightmare? Why did Boozy's mom appear in the home room? Oh, yes. Um, well, that is that is the big mystery is why does the big worm know what her mom looks like? Um, and we're gonna we're gonna find that, but that's a that's a fantastic question. Um, and I hope we see more of more of her mom because I like her hairstyle. So. I know, sorry. Why are you here? Stay tuned. <laughs> Yeah. Hi guys. Hello. Um, so I have a really interesting question. Is it possible that any human survived? Because I know in like the area where the worm was, it's in cryogenics, and the human hand shows up. So could it be possible that any human survived? We we may or may not look into that as a as a as a um, a part of the thing that we're going into is wait. Where are all those humans at? Why are they just letting these robots play? Uh, maybe we'll see. Oh, also they're yeah, this is spooky ones at the beginning. But um, yes, we'll there 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 may be there may be some some humans showing up on our spooky ice world sooner or later. Alright. Ooh, human. Ooh, humans, I've heard of those. <gasps> oh, I'm up. Oh my god. Oh yeah, we uh, wanna know that. Wow. Yeah, it's um I would say like not officially at all, but I will say I have a very limited pool of ideas. Uh, so there's there's bound to be some overlap like conceptually and obviously even there we're starting to get into those kind of some sort of biomechanical shenanigans. So um yeah, uh, I wouldn't say they're 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 connected in any degree, but there's definitely like a lot of inspiration like similarities between them. Yeah. Oh, I want, I want dogs. I want, I want all life to be exterminated, but, but dogs are still alive. Um, Boo! Yes, we, we do, we do actually, yeah, we see some animals. Uh, there's little robot bugs, which are, are kind of gross, but also really cute to me. Um, so we, we got those things, but there is, we, we, for some reason, despite being a robot show, we have an episode that is, quite involved with a specific animal that's cute and fun. So, stay tuned. Yes, Animal Fun begins soon. Aww. Hi, Kevin. So how, what was the inspiration behind Mighty Grounds? Uh, technical limitations <laughs> was the uh, way to start yeah. off with. Uh, we were talk when we were talking to him, we were like, oh, let's see if we can make a, re a show really, really fast. And then it was like, oh, do robots, because that's usually a lot easier to model. You don't have to worry about like, skin, a lot easier to animate as well. That was original, that was original idea, but uh, actually turned out more difficult than doing humans. <laughs> Get pranked. Um, yeah, yeah, inspiration I think like clearly is like a lot of just good sci-fi horror out there. Like the thing is fantastic. Um, I like like the Dead Space Event Horizon, all these cool, wacky, spooky sci-fi stuff is all hugely inspirational to me. Um, but yeah, a lot of it also just comes from like the morphing of a series, so that's that's kind of kind of touched on. You start one thing where you might have clear inspiration, in this case it was like a Wally like idea of like it's just cute robots who are hanging out. And then kind of as we realize, oh, we can do a bit more than that, it was like, okay, well, can we do a bit more of it in a spooky direction? And then it's like pulling in more, more inspiration. So it's kind of hard to pin down, but um, yeah. So that was somewhat of an answer. You probably amazing job because this is going to be a phenomenal series, and I hope you guys 
kind of off topic. Is the Metal Rider comic in LA yet? Has it arrived in LA? Uh, I'm pretty sure they're getting sent out at the moment. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. your seats we'll get just like the last three people up um to, to ask their question you'll get a chance after to 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 do something but i have something i have something i want to get in before the show finishes so if everyone can return to the seats we'll I'll answer this thing that like ah that's satisfying they did they did the thing um but also keep in mind we're not going to answer all the questions that are brought up um only hopefully the main ones um so yeah and that also kind of leads into the the question about uh, lore, and I will say, since since the show ultimately is about exploring that, um, probably nothing I can say at the moment. Um, but episode two, there's already a bunch of shenanigans there just to mull over. So, oh, that comes out. You just look it up on the video. Exactly. And uh, then you cause fun back then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. We'll keep going. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we'll keep going. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, hi, I have two as well. Um, one of them significantly more like serious than the other, so I'll ask the funny one first. Um, how are N and B 
staying alive without overheating since they don't seem to be consuming any oil right now? A very good question, Liam. Yeah. I ask this all the time. <laughs> yeah, they keep getting on my case about that one. Uh, it's almost like I set up a precedent and then didn't, <laughs> didn't fall through. Um, no, um, we assume there's there's some some uh, off-screen probably like, I mean, they do, they do live in a giant corpse spire, so, you know, they got, they got, they got rations, is, right. is my current thought. Um, and then the other question I have is, are there any like deleted scenes or like scrap content that like almost made it into the pilot or this episode and then was like scrapped? I, I mean, Kevin and I were just joking about how how nightmarishly different like the first passes of my scripts are for this stuff. Um, so there's not like a lot of content that makes it to like animation or like pre production because usually we try to weed it out so that when we get the scripts, it's like we're pretty sold on it. Um, but there's a lot of a lot of weird shenanigans in the writing phase, so maybe at some point we can release a, a weird, surreal nightmare book of what episodes could have been. That would be interesting. All right, thank you. Thanks. I don't know how to okay, it's like that. <laughs> all right. Okay, so first of all, it is an absolute honor to meet you guys. Like you guys are legit my idols. Thank you. Oh, thank yeah. You. So um, two questions. One, so the symbol on on Ed's hat that was supposed to foreshadow episode two. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's a funny story. Bit of a fun story there. Yeah. The um the the pilot emblem on his hat was meant to just it was just meant to be there. Um, but classic 3D animation. It just just didn't show up in the render. So and like, nobody noticed. Nobody noticed. Yeah, that was we didn't notice until the episode was up, so it was like, shoot. Um, but our 3D artist like did such a good job on it, and I thought it was so cool that I was like, okay, instead of just like popping it on, we'll make we'll make a quick scene about like, oh, Uzi finds it and like puts it on his hat. So it's like a, a little a quick little thing to like be like, and this was supposed to be here. Um, <laughs> yeah, so that's the reason behind that. All right. So last question. So is there going to be um, like a worse threat than Jay? Like one so murderous that will rip the spines out of everybody in the series? Yeah, we get uh, we get we think the, the murder drones are overpowered. Ooh, we get silly with it. So yeah, there's definitely bigger, bigger, spookier threats on the way. Ooh. All right, thanks. Condor man sucks. Peace. <laughs> thanks, child. Let's go. I mainly have like a sort of like a theory question. Yeah. Like, yeah. is it possible that when worker drones can be turned into murder drones, like when programming? Maybe over Um yeah, that's definitely that's part of the that is part of the, the lore that we're exploring and the the murder drones and the worker drones do have suspiciously similar builds. Um so yeah, I would say that's a, that's a valid theory to start looking into. Like I have like a second question. It's like the murder drones and worker drones like Yeah, so they're on, they're on like, uh, we're saying we're in the far future, and they're on an exoplanet that humans uh, went to, and we're mining for resources. Um, so it used to be, it was, it's not Earth, it's a different planet that was just inhabited by humans. Um, Earth is still chilling somewhere in space, um, and we may or may not see, see what's going on there. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. It's super awesome. That is an awesome cosplay. Thank you. Um, I wanted to know if, um, is being a, uh, is going to, is B gonna um, portray them or like turn into something like the centipede, like Jake? Um, I will say no, no centipedism going on, but um, yeah, we kind of, her, her character hasn't been super fleshed out yet, but that's something that definitely we, we get more into is kind of like what her role in the story is and like what her role is like compared to and uh and in uzi how she how she plays off their character so yeah we definitely we get more into her we we uh she's not just sitting in a chair the whole season uh, but uh, yeah so get get pumped okay, thank, thank you. you yeah thanks all right so unfortunately that's the end of the the q a segment but but uh i have something exciting um so leah will actually